Hello everyone, welcome to another video from the tutorial series SPM Plus Mastery and Certification. My name is Tabish. In the last video, we had a comprehensive discussion about mixer and separator model palette. Specifically, we emphasized on the separation of different substreams, including mix substream and solid substream, with the help of flow separator and substream separator. In today's video, we will learn how to simulate unit operations included in the separator palette of SPM Plus. These unit operations include flash 2 separator, flash 3 separator, and decanter. These separators are based on the rigorous vapor liquid liquid equilibrium. Also, we will learn how to use SEP and SEP2 separator. These are the hypothetical separators used to simulate the systems where appropriate unit operation model is not available. For today's exercise, we will use following problem statement. Consider an example of an enhanced oil recovery process where high pressure carbon dioxide is pumped into an oil reservoir and some of that carbon dioxide dissolves into the hydrocarbon phase that results in the increase in the volume and reduces the viscosity, ultimately resulting in the increased hydrocarbon recovery. Water is typically present in the oil reservoirs, so the likely reservoir phase behavior is vapor liquid liquid equilibrium where liquid phase rich in the hydrocarbons liquid phase rich in water and vapor phase rich in carbon dioxide are considered in simultaneous equilibrium so consider an equimolar mixture of each of normal decane that is used to represent the hydrocarbon reservoir fluid water and carbon dioxide at approximate reservoir conditions of 75 bar and 415 Kelvin. For these three components in equilibrium at 75 bar and 415 Kelvin, you are asked to determine the composition of each phase. So let's open SPM Plus and learn how to solve these kind of problems. Start with the new simulation without selection of any default template. Add three desired components, decane, water and carbon dioxide go to the next input form here you need to define a thermophysical property method for this exercise let's choose a uniquack thermophysical method we'll come back to the method specifications once again because system is operating at significantly high pressure but for the base case Let's go to the next form. These are the binding interaction parameters corresponding to Uniquack model. You can also choose to estimate the missing interaction parameter by checking this checkbox. So Aspen property estimation system will estimate the missing interaction parameters using Unifact property model. So the required property inputs are complete. We are ready to run the properties environment. So the results of the property estimation are available. Let's save this file with the Ctrl S button. Now go to the simulation environment. Here we need to define the flow sheet first and then define the input properties to simulate the flow sheet. We'll need unit operations from the separator palette. Here you can notice models of flash 2, flash 3, decanter, sap and sap 2. While you hover the cursor above any of the model, you can notice a brief description about the model. For instance, flash 2 is used for the vapor liquid equilibrium and typically used to simulate flash drums, evaporators, knockout drums, etc. The flash 3 separator has three outlet streams and uses vapor liquid liquid equilibrium to simulate physical units including flash drums and decanters. The decanter has two outlet streams and both should be the liquid phase streams. So it uses liquid-liquid equilibrium to separate two immiscible phases. Whereas SEP and SEP2, these are termed as component separators. SEP2 unit separates the inlet streams to two outlet streams based on the specified flow rate or specified the separate fraction. It does not take into account any physical separation process. Rather, it depends merely on the separate fraction or specified flow rate defined by the user. The SEP model can separate the feed stream into any number of defined outlet streams, again based on the flow rate specified by the user or the separate fraction specified by the user. You can also read about the unit operations from the Aspen help. 
So you can go to the help under using the simulation environment, under unit operation models and under the model palette separators. Here you can read a brief description about the unit operation models from the separators palette. For the given exercise, since we are asked to separate normal decay in water and carbon dioxide and this system makes one gas phase and two liquid phases so we should go for vapor liquid liquid equilibrium to simulate this system so choose flash 3 column as the most appropriate unit operation for this system let's name it as flash 3 add material streams here you can notice all the desired streams this is the feed required one or more you can add single feed or multiple feed streams here you need to add a vapor stream let's call it vapor here you need to attach first liquid stream let's call it liquid one and here you need to attach second liquid stream let's call it liquid two once all the connections are done you can press escape button to get out of the selection select the entire flow sheet by control a button press control b and control J for the better presentation and smoothing of the connections. Once the flow sheet is ready, you can hide the model palette section. Also fit the flow sheet to the entire window. Let's define the feed stream. Temperature of the feed stream is given as 415 Kelvin and the pressure is 75 bar. We were asked to define ecomolar composition of decaying water and carbon dioxide. Since no total flow rate is provided, we can define the compositions in terms of their flow rate. So 1 kilomole per hour for all the three components will define the composition as well as the required total flow rate. Go to the block specifications or click next to get to the next input form. Here you can define the flash specifications. For the flash since degree of freedom is 2, so you have to define 2 parameters out of 4 available specifications. Pressure, temperature, duty and vapor fraction. For this example, let's choose temperature and pressure. Define the temperature as 415 Kelvin and pressure as 75 bar. So with these specifications, you can read required inputs complete. So you are ready to run the simulation. Before running the simulation, press Ctrl S button to save the file. Let's run the simulation. So results are available. You can view the results either from the stream summary or you can go to the flash 3 block in the stream results as well as you can see the results section. Let's first have a look into the results. Results of the flash 3 column are the outlet temperature, outlet pressure, vapor fraction on mole basis and mass basis, heat duty, fraction of the first liquid to the total liquid and the corresponding pressure drop. Out of curiosity, you can also check the mass balance and energy balance and results for the phase equilibrium where the K values of all these three components are provided based on the two liquid phases. Let's have a look into the stream results. Here you can notice that the feed has molar vapor fraction of 0.054, the two liquid streams has zero vapor fraction and the top product has one vapor fraction. That clearly matches the specification of liquid phase and the vapor phase in equilibrium with each other. Have a look into the product mole flow rate. Since the total feed flow rate was 3 kmol per hour, out of which 0.4615 kmol per hour separated into the vapor phase. The first liquid phase rich in normal decay is 1.568 kmol per hour and the second liquid phase rich in water is 0.97 kmol per hour. You might be interested to see the mole fraction of these three phases. Carbon dioxide in vapor phase is 95%. On mole basis, water in water phase is 90.2% on mole basis and decay is 63.65% in the organic phase. If you are interested, you can also add further properties of your interest. Maybe for instance, the bubble temperature, maybe dew temperature or any of the other property you are interested, you can add to the stream summary table. So the bubble temperature of feed stream was 405.93 Kelvin and dew temperature of the feed stream was 634.97 Kelvin where the feed is defined as ecomolar mixture of normal decay, water and carbon dioxide. And similarly, 
the bubble temperature and the dew temperature of other streams are also defined. For all these simulation results, whether they are reliable or not, they very much depend on the thermodynamic method defined for the estimation of the properties. In this example, we had used Unicoag thermodynamic method and Unicoag thermodynamic method uses ideal gas equation of state for the vapor phase. You can read the details of the method in the selected method window. Here is the composition of calculation routes of different properties and the model specified for calculation of each property is defined in the models tab. For instance, the fugacity coefficient of the vapor mixture is calculated using ideal gas equation of state model. This is typically relevant if the operating pressure is near to the ambient conditions, but for the given application, since the pressure was significantly high, so it's not reasonable to use ideal gas equation of state for these kind of systems. Rather, there should be an appropriate equation of state that can be selected either from the cubic equation of state or even it can be a virial equation of state or appropriate generalized correlation. To choose a different model to simulate the non-ideal gas phase, either you can modify the method on the specifications tab or you can modify the method under the selected method section. For comparison, let's first take a snapshot of the stream results so that we can change the model and compare the results afterwards. Let's take a snapshot of these stream results. Now we can go back to the properties environment and change the ideal gas equation of state to let's say Pang Robinson equation of state. Let's name the new model PRUNIQ just to name a different model that is modified as per the user specification. Select equation of state as Pang Robinson or any other appropriate equation of state as per the definition of the components. So you can notice that PRUNIQ has been added as selected method that is modified from the default Unicoag method. Go to the next window. So interaction parameters corresponding to Pang Robinson equation of states are provided. You can check the equation of state to understand the relevance and significance of these interaction parameters. Let's run the properties environment and go to the simulation environment. Run the simulation once again. So the results are available with Unicoag model for the calculation of activity coefficient of the liquid phases and Pang Robinson equation of state for the calculation of fugacity coefficient for the vapor phase. One thing you can clearly notice that the molar vapor fraction has considerably increased from 5% to almost 12.7% because of the modification of the thermodynamic method. Since Pang Robinson equation of state has been used at high pressure compared to the ideal gas equation of state, so this 12.7% molar vapor fraction seems to be more relevant and appropriate compared to the previous 5% as calculated using ideal gas equation of state. Also check the molar flow rates. Here we can compare the molar flow rates with the previous calculated molar flow rates. So you can notice that the vapor liquid liquid equilibrium has considerably shifted in favor of the vapor phase compared to the previous calculation. In the previous calculation, 0.46 kmol per hour out of 3 kmol per hour were separated in the vapor phase. But with the modification of the method, the vapor flow rate is 0.588 kmol per hour out of 3 kmol per hour of the feed stream. So significantly, the vapor flow rate has increased to almost 0.12 kmol per hour. And accordingly, the liquid flow rates has also been adjusted. You can also cross check the composition of three product streams. So this is how you can use flash 3 separator for the calculation of vapor liquid liquid equilibrium. You can also simulate the same system using vapor liquid equilibrium and liquid liquid equilibrium separately. For that purpose, you can build a new flow sheet using flash 2 separator and decanter. Let's see how to simulate flash 2 separator. Let's name it as flash 2. and add a decanter at the downstream of flash 2. So let's attach material streams. To add the material streams, either you can duplicate the feed stream to flash 3 as well as flash 2 or you can define a new feed stream to flash 2. Let's learn how to duplicate any material stream. For that, go to the model palette. In the manipulator palette, there is a block called duplicate. That's a stream duplicator. Attach the stream duplicator to the flow sheet. Let's call it 
DUPL attach the feed stream to the duplicate inlet port for that purpose on the stream right click go to reconnect and reconnect the destination so the stream will be detached from the flash 3 column and will be ready to attach as the inlet stream of the duplicator similarly add a material stream and attach it to the flash 3 column let's call it F1 and take a material stream and attach it to the flash 2 column. Let's call it F2. So the information of feed stream will be duplicated to F1 as well as F2 streams. Let's attach material stream to the flash 2 column. Vapor product from the flash 2 column. Let's call it F2 vapor. Liquid from the flash 2 column. Let's call it F2 liquid. Since the liquid should be immiscible liquid phases. So you can pass it to the decanter for the liquid liquid separation. Take first liquid phase. Let's call it F2 liquid 1 and take it second liquid phase let's call it F2 liquid 2. So the flow sheet is ready and the required inputs are incomplete. Hide the model palette, separate the flow sheet to the entire window, select all the flow sheet with the control A, press control B and control J. Now we need to define the input specifications for the decanter and flash 2 column. Let's define the same specifications for the decanter and flash 2 as has been defined for the flash 3 column. Pressure is 75 bar and the temperature is 415 Kelvin. Here you can also define the key component for the second liquid phase. You can define yourself whether the organic phase should be the liquid one or the aqueous phase should be the liquid one. Otherwise you are ready to go to the next input form. Also for the flash 2 column define the temperature as 415 Kelvin and pressure 75 bar. Flow sheet is complete. All necessary inputs have been provided so you are ready to run the simulation. Results are available. Let's have a look onto the results of the decanter for the liquid liquid separation. You can see the temperature pressure duties and the fraction of first liquid to the total liquid. Steam results are also available. So F2 liquid is the feed stream to the decanter F2 liquid 1 is the first liquid and F2 liquid 2 is the second liquid separated from the decanter you can look into the mole flow rates and the mole fractions of the each component in the each stream simultaneously you can also show the results of the vapor stream from the F2 flash column here you can compare the results of the combination of flash 2 and decanter with the flash 3 column. Principally the results should have been the same but apparently it looks like the results are slightly different from the previous case. At this moment I'm not sure what could have been the reason because the vapor outlet from the flash 3 column was around 0.57 kmol mole per hour but in case of flash 2 column followed by the decanter the vapor flow rate is 0.38 kmol per hour instead of 0.57 kmol per hour so this is how you can simulate flash 2 column flash 3 column and the decanter apart from flash 2 column flash 3 column and decanter there are two other unit operations available in the separator palette namely sep and sep2 let's first explore sep2 separator let's name it as sep2 if desired, you can change the icon of SEP2. We can take a duplicate stream from the same feed stream and attach it to SEP2. Let's name it as feed SEP2. So you can attach one or multiple feed streams to SEP2 unit model. But as a product stream, there are only two options. One is the overhead product and the other one is the bottom product and both are the required product streams. Name it as SEP2 bottom and name the top stream as SEP2 top. Let's open the input form of the SEP2 block. Here you need to define the specifications of the SEP2. The SEP2 model gives option of substream. The outlet streams are also given in the drop down menu. You are only required to define all the components in any of the outlet stream. You can choose to define the component specification in terms of the separate fraction 
or in terms of the flow rate. Hypothetically, I choose to define the flow rate of each component in any one of the two product streams. For instance, let's choose normal decay as 0.3 kmol per hour in the SEP2 bottom stream. Similarly, 0.7 kmol per hour in the SEP2 bottom stream and 0 kmol per hour of carbon dioxide in the SEP2 bottom stream. There is no physical background or explanation for the definition of these specifications and these specifications are entirely arbitrary and should be used very carefully when using SEP2 component separator for simulation of any physical process. So with the given numbers, all the inputs of the SEP2 block are complete and you are ready to run the simulation. Let's see the results. A duty is mentioned and the component separation between top and the bottom stream are also defined. Let's see the stream results. You can notice that 0.3 kmol per hour and 0.7 kmol per hour of water leaves from the bottom of the SEP2 column as defined in the specifications of the SEP2 and the remaining material leaves from the top of the column. Again, this is entirely hypothetical and does not represent any of the separation process. This block is particularly useful when defining a separation process that is not currently available in SPM Plus library or the specifications of the process separation is well known and does not require the rigorous calculation to save the time consumption. Similarly, you can use SEP component separator Let's call it SEP. Attach a material stream from the duplicator to SEP column. Let's call FSEP. You can attach as many feed stream to the SEP column as available. Similarly, in the product stream, you have the option to attach more than two product streams. Let's call SEP P1 for the product stream. SEP P2, SEP P3. These are all the product stream from the SEP column. Still, you have the option to attach as many product streams as appropriate for the given system. Similar to the SEP2 column, you are required to define either the split fraction or you can define the flow rate of each component in the product streams to define the degree of the freedom of the separation process. In principle, you will be required to define six specifications for the three product streams and six specifications will be two specifications for the each component. Let's arbitrarily define any value of the separate fraction. Imagine 50% of the feed stream component decay leaves from the product stream P1, 30% of the water leaves from the P1 product stream and 90% of the carbon dioxide leaves from the P1 product stream. Similarly, you need to define either from the P2 stream or P3 stream. Let's imagine 30% decay leaves from the P2 stream, 10% of water leaves from the P2 stream and 5% of carbon dioxide leaves from the P2 stream. So all the required information has been provided and you are ready to run the simulation. Results are available. Go to the stream results and check the flow rates. So these are exactly the specifications we have provided to the component separator and the unit operation produced the corresponding flow rates in each of the product streams. So this is how you can use all the unit operations available in the separator block. For further practice, I suggest following practice problem. In this case, a gaseous reactor effluent contains following flow rates in kilomole per hour, styrene 175 kilomole per hour, ethyl benzene 70 kilomole per hour, toluene 55, water 245, methanol 55 and hydrogen 175 kmol per hour. You are asked to compute the equilibrium composition and amount of all phases at 35 degrees Celsius and 300 kPa. Please keep in mind, in the previous example we have used carbon dioxide along with water and normal decay. Because of the high pressure of the system, carbon dioxide was not used as the Henry component but in the given example, since this is operating at relatively low pressure, you might need to define hydrogen as the Henry component. In the next two videos, we'll cover reactor model palette. In the first video, we'll cover non-kinetic reactors, stoichiometric reactor, yield reactor, equilibrium reactor, 
and Gibbs reactor. Whereas in the second lecture, we will cover kinetic reactors, including plug flow reactor model, CSTR reactor model, and electrolyzer model.